This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and uh, well, today I'm going to talk a bit about. Um, kind of language, like the whole idea here is, is stop punishing yourself, right? And so there's uh, one of the first awarenesses I had with um, making a shift in my coaching in the fitness industry a number of years ago was realizing, uh, and it's probably, it was probably after reading a number of books such as um, a couple of old mate Tony Robbins books or um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and a few other things and, and just really understanding how much the way that we label our word, world around us really literally labels and, and paints a picture for us and, and then we end up living that picture. And then I, I started to hear people um, talk about um, how they saw training. Now, they didn't really even understand that or even with diet and nutrition. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples today around that and and take this how you want to take it and, and maybe apply it. Um, you know, my offer to you is is to apply if you are in the fitness space or if not, grab it and see how it affects, you know, you and your industry, right? Like if you hear it when people complain about Mondays, it's like you're literally complaining about one-seventh of your life. Like that's what, that's what you're complaining about in doing so. It's like what's so fucking bad about Mondays? If you hate Mondays so much, like, what the fuck is it about your job that you, you keep on trying to, to escape on a weekend, right, in order to be able to pay yourself enough to, to do shit you don't like, to be able to go and do it again? Like, it's, it's, it's really, like, stopping and listening to what it is and how it is that we're labeling uh, and layering and painting the world around us. And so... One of the biggest things, and I remember remember this moment where somebody was like, oh, I'm back for more punishment, right? And I'm like, punishment? I'm like, fuck, I don't punish people. It's like, how is this punishment, right? Like you have in this in this one hour today in the gym, let's hypothetically roll with me here, like you have a, an, an opportunity in the gym today. This isn't a punishment, right? This is an opportunity. And don't lose that opportunity because you're too busy being a fucking victim because you're getting punished. It's like... Why would you pay someone to punish you unless that's how you actually see your see your life? You're like, oh, it's just a joke. It's like actually, it's it's not. You think it is, and that's fair enough. But you 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 see it as a form of punishment of some sort, right? And what's really interesting here, and and this is something that I encourage you to really think about and and, and have a look around you and see if you can see it. But people often train the way they treat themselves, right? And so the people that are like really keen on being punished. They're often punishing themselves with other things, maybe not making assignments due on time or punishing themselves for it to be perfect. Maybe they're, um, they punish themselves with alcohol uh, or they punish themselves um, you know, for eating bad, etc., etc., etc. It's like the way that we train is, is a tiny little window into the way that we actually treat ourselves. It's really quite fascinating. And so you see the people that take their time to learn the, learn the craft and da, da, you know, whatever it may be, like you'll see that they'll do that with a lot of other things in their life. And so as a coach, really fucking pay attention, really observe, really be curious because it pays off dividends because you start to see habits that people don't even know that they're doing themselves. But it brings back to the conversation of like, listen as well. The idea that I'm punishing somebody for them to come in here and have an opportunity to be able to live a healthier life, to have happier memories in the future. Like, how is that punishment? And you as a coach or a trainer, why are you calling it punishment? You're, you're feeding the issue. You see, this is the thing, is that in the fitness industry, I have zero competitors. They're on my team. This is, this is really important to understand. The competitors is the, you know, is, the, is the marketing. It's the fast food places. It's all of that sort of stuff. And I'm not saying don't have a pizza because I come from the belief that it's far healthier to have a beer with some mates and a good laugh than it is to bitch about someone over a salad. But what I'm saying here is that we've got it wrong. The, the, the capitalist society, not that I'm against that necessarily, it's a whole other conversation, but it encourages us if we're not careful to go, it's my gym versus your gym. No, fuckhead, it's not my gym versus your gym. Okay? And we don't even have an obesity epidemic. We have a mis, misinformation mass marketing epidemic. They're, they're our competitors. And we are educational facilities. 
And it's really important when we, when we start to shift like this in this space, this is where the biggest fucking difference comes. Because when we operate as educational facilities, rather than just flogging people and coming in and, and then, you know, they go out on weekends and actually punish their bodies, right? They eat crap and then they, they drink shit loads because they've been too busy not punishing themselves. They end up having this fucking like, just this, you know, swing one way, then swing the other. It's like, there's just no control. There's no balance. It's like complete resistance to like complete, like, fuck it. And people do that with their training. It's like, oh, I'm so sick of yo-yoing. It's like, then stop trying to, to control everything, right? Because whatever we try to control, controls us. It's looking at, well, hang a sec. Let's, let me just look at what's in my control and pay attention to that because, the way that we language our world is so crucial. It is so crucial. And as a coach, it is so crucial that you you silence your mind. You, you remove all this idea of what you think you know is best for the client and simply listen to how they're actually labeling and languaging their world. It's crucial because, you, you know, it's even, here's an idea. We used to do burpee penalties for being late. And then I'm like, hang on a sec. People are paying to come here to improve their lives. And because I got stuck in traffic, I'm penalizing them. I'm like, I wouldn't want to fucking come back. It's like, why would these people want to come back? Fuck that. And so we simply, we just got rid of it. It's just like, it, it's a joke. It's funny. It's right, It's like, it's not. You're not, you're an adult I'm dealing with an adult. Have an adult conversation with them. Don't penalize them. Have a communicate. you know, is it normal for you to be late? If that's the case, then work with them if there's going to be an issue there or not. And maybe the issue lays in your end, not theirs. They're like, look, I've got a busy day. I've got a couple of kids. I'm dealing with the best I can. I'm going to be five to 10 minutes late every now and again. It's like, great, just warm up and join the team. So what? You're like, oh, but it has to be here. That's what you say, but that's what I, yep. And that's, that's your work. And like I've said in a previous podcast is that if something bothers you, but doesn't bother them, then maybe that's something for you to work through, not for them necessarily, right? It's interesting stuff. And so... This even feeds into this idea around diet and bad and good, right? Naughty foods, bad foods. It's like, no, it's all just fucking food. It's not even called healthy food because healthy food, like, it means it's only preserved for healthy people. And if I have an identifi- identify uh, identity issue around me being healthy, I'm trying, I'm on a health kick. So when I'm on a health kick, I'm going to eat healthy food. But when I get off that health kick and things get busy again, then I'm going to turn back to a inverted commas, normal person, then I eat normal food, which is then whatever the fuck I want to eat, right? And whatever I fuck want to eat is kind of subjective because uh, I eat whatever the fuck I want to eat. It's just I changed what I wanted to eat as I got older. So this is where you can eat whatever you want and become healthier. You just change what you want. And that's through programming and understanding and education, which is why you got to bring back your gym, your facility to be an educational facility. Because from that point, over time, people shift, people change. You know, there's not a perfect program. There is a continual unraveling and development of an individual towards their own potential. That's not a program. That's their journey. That's their discovery. And you as a coach are there to facilitate that if that's your role. And if you're the role, if you're a client listening to this, then own that shit. That's yours. Own where you're at. Own where you're at with your fitness. Own where you're at with your excuses if you have them. Own where you're at with your life. You know, if you can't fit four one-hour sessions in, then don't fucking do it because you're just going to, you know what you're going to do. You know that you're going to try and do it and you'll do it twice and you'll feel good about it and then the next week you'll miss out and you'll do three and guess what happens? We all know what happens after that. Each one of you listening to this just painted a picture in your mind. You know exactly what happens. It turns into three, turns into one, right? Then I'll try and do two, then I'm not making it. Fuck, I always do this. Then there's a tub of ice cream or something that represents an ice cream, right? Not that you shouldn't have ice cream, especially on a hot summer's day like today. But my point there being is that we really have to pay attention both as coaches and clients to A, what we're owning, but B, how we're langu- languaging our world because there is no bad and good foods. There's food. Food grew from the ground. I had a mum. That's called food. Everything else is called crap, carbonated, refined, artificial, and processed. It doesn't mean you shouldn't eat it. I friggin' love pizza. It means you should understand that that's not food for a human body. And people go, it's a sometimes food. Sure, but sometimes it's subjective, right? And so just understand that you can have it, and that's fine, but... It's just understanding what is food and what's not. Like, that's crucial. And that's where we start to move away from bad food and good food. Because what's good food today and when you're 30 will be different to when you were 20 and will be different to when you're 50. And if we don't build that relationship with our body and our education, then we're constantly codependent on someone else telling us what we should do about our bodies. And that's not fucking ownership and that's not autonomy.
and that's where things change. And team, I'm out. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. If you haven't already, Facebook, Mood Prep Online, jump on it. And once again, it's sweaty up here. Hey, I'm going to go take the pooch for a walk. I fucking love you guys. Until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. Unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.